Hey YouTube, what's going on guys? Just making another car video. This is actually my brother's Honda Jazz. Now, he said it was running really rough and I went with him and it feels like a automatic transmission. This has the CVT transmission in it. It's a 2002 Honda Jazz. Um, and it feels like it, but it's not. These are actually a dual spark ignition system on them. So a four cylinder car with eight coil packs. Now you have two part numbers and two coil packs. So the back ones are one and the front ones are another one. So they're not specific to each cylinder. They're just specific to the front and the rear. And you can't, you actually can't um, get them wrong for two reasons. One, as you can see, the mounting point of where the plug is and where they bolt into is different. So you don't have to any, really worry. And not need that, there's actually a, sorry guys, there's a part number on there that says, what's the part number here? We've got CM11108. And then you've got these ones, which are CM11109. So that's all you have to do. So you don't have to worry when you take them out that you're gonna muddle them up because there's one for the back, there's one for the front, okay? Now, the spark plugs that were in there, um, the back ones hadn't been changed, the front ones had just been changed. And they'd been changed wrong too. They'd had the, a different heat rating in them. Um, so they were BKR um, six, they should be NGK number, BKR 6E-11s. Okay, not ESs, that was an ES that was in there. Now, the difference between that is, is the, and then you can also put Arithiums in here as well, they do list, list Arithium ones for it. Um, but you should have a groove. Now, the old ones were really knackered, you couldn't even see the groove. Um, sorry guys, just a little bit of bad videotaping here. Alright, so, as you can see here, if you can focus it, I might have to put it against something there. There you go. See the groove in there? So that has to have that groove. But if, as long as you get that right part number on the NGK website, it shows you. Um, but yeah, there were different ones in the front and different in the back. So that was one of the reasons. The other reason, you couldn't even hardly see the groove on the ones that were the correct ones at the back. Um, so yeah, so it's quite an easy process really. You take the little cover off, the beauty cover as they call them. I'll wipe that off afterwards, doesn't really matter. Dust ain't gonna hurt it. Now, and then you've got four here. I've taken the spark plugs out already. You have a bolt in each one. You unbolt them. And then same at the back. You don't have to take any of this stuff off or anything like that. That's It's totally accessible with a proper spark plug socket. And these spark plug sockets either have a magnet inside them or a rubber piece inside. So they grab hold of the spark plug. So when you put it in there, it will then grab hold of it and you can just pull it out. You don't have to undo it and then try to put a magnet pickup tool in there or anything like that. Um, so then you change them there, you wait until they basically, you feel them touch. And then once they touch, then you do basically about another 90 degree turn. About that, you don't want to over tighten them. You can torque them, but you don't really need to if you know what you're doing. Uh, you just feel it, keep going until it feels it touching and then you do like a 90 degree turn, that's about it. Um, so that's one thing that I will be changing, and so it's a dual spark, so for a four cylinder engine, and it's the same as like a V8 engine or, a, or an inline eight, so two parts, two spark ignition system, which allows for cleaner burn and more efficient burn of the of, in the combustion chamber, so you get better fuel economy and more power. That's why Honda did it for a 1.3 liter engine. Um, now, I was changing the air filter. Now the old air filter, as you can see, it's pretty dirty. You can't, you know, it was all dust, I've knocked it out a little bit, um, but it was pretty bad. This is the new one, okay, this it, it takes a uh, Ryko number 1526, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, 1526 Ryko number there, and that's just the Westfield number. But the main one you look up is 1526. Okay, so let's compare the new one to the old one. So that's a red one, obviously. 
but it's clean, obviously being new. Um, but there's a way to test them. Okay, guys, so if you go out here into the light, into the sun, now, I don't know, I can't see there, but you can see through it and you'll see the light coming through. Okay, this one here, if it's too bad already, you won't see any, see, you can't see any light coming through there. That's not getting enough airflow through there, so that's going to be starving and you're going to have um, a, running lean with the car, So and it's going to screw up with the computer as well. Now, I was taking all these off and they're just little mushroom head screws. So, but there's a problem. People tighten them too much and they do this stuff with them. And they basically wreck the heads. So that one I managed to get out with a screwdriver with my nice Ampro through screwdrivers. You can even put sockets into them and stuff. These are really nice. Um, but I've had to actually get a drill piece and part of my thing here, see the top there? So what, and there's the helicoil bit that will go in back in the top of this in a minute because I haven't destroyed this at all. Okay, so I first off tried to get it out, I couldn't. And then I've drilled it by hand, the old hand drills, because you can feel it better and you, you're not gonna damage it. I like these for this sort of work, um, purely because you're a lot more control than a drill that's going too quickly and you, can, and you won't go off center. So I drilled here and as you can see, right there guys, that's the rest of the screw there. So I haven't actually pulled it out yet. Now what I did is I drilled a hole and then as you can see, I've got a little self-tapping mushroom head screw enough and screwed it in a little bit, tightened it and then tightened it back and it got stuck in there and I was managed to actually, it broke off and managed to actually get it out. So that's just a little, little tip. So I drilled it out first in the center and then I got a little mushroom head self-tapping screw and screw it into it clockwise and then anti-clockwise. And then obviously the rest of this will come out. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just get a pair of pliers. Okay. And we will take the rest of this air box cover off. It's a bit hard to do it with my left hand. Okay, pull that back that will then come off like that there we go okay so now I had to get that off to put the new air filter in um, so these are the old screws now I'm actually getting rid of all of them and you can see got a couple one doesn't want to come out I have to screw it out in a minute I think it's being a pain all right so I'll get that one out in a minute there's a few other ones there and I've bought some new machine nut ones um, with much deeper style flat head screwdrivers in there, a Phillips head screwdriver head in it. So it's much deeper ones, it's very hard, there's one of the old ones as well I've got in there. Very hard to round them ones out because it's really specific to what type of screwdriver. Just make sure guys when you're unscrewing things, is you make sure you select the right screwdriver head for it, Phillips or flat head, and the right size. If you get the wrong size, then this sort of ha thing happens. Now, this is, was a pain. Try to use an easy out on it, didn't come out. Um, as you can see there, look, there's all dirt inside the airbox and stuff. There's all bits of grass and sand and leaves and all the rest of it. So I'm going to blow that right out. I'll clean that right out. There's another helicoil bit there. That actually fits on the bottom bit of there, which I'll put in. And then I'll put the new air filter in it. I'll replace the spark plugs in here and we'll see how it runs. So, yeah, the process to that is taking this off, just holds on by two screws, two bolts there. These ones, mushroom head type ones. Take them off, that simply comes off. Then you unplug the coil pack. So you've got a coil pack like this. Okay. So you unplug that one, you've got a little tab there. Very easy, you just push down on it and pull back. So when you click it in, you're, you don't have to push on it when you click in, it will just automatically go on and latch onto that little lat notch there. Push, pull it down, pull it out. Unbolt that one bolt, just here. 
okay and it just simply pulls out and then I put some contact cleaner down inside they don't have to pull them apart um, then there's actually a testing process to make sure the coil packs are working pro properly uh, and that's on your multimeter guys if you've got a multimeter which you can get this from any auto parts store I just get it from my store and you go to your ohms go to 2000k the little ohm symbol there okay 2000 and then you get one of these get one of your coil packs and I'll just hold it with my feet guys and I need someone to actually be recording for me or I need a holder one but if you go on there you see that and then positive or negative doesn't matter you'll find one on the side there hold on Let's see if I can thing anyway you put one there and then you positive in there and you touch them and that will then read the ohms um, I can't do it because I haven't got another hand I need I really need a camera guy uh, man guys um, I wish I had my mum here or something I think she's inside somewhere let's see if I can get it and that should then read something and you just check all of them there you go so that's reading 0 0.19 and they were all the same there was 0 0.19 one was 0 0.18 that's fine they're the same resistance there so they've got resistance in there so they're working all right so you check test either one of them one of the you've got three pins inside there and you put there on the ohm meter and you put one on this one outside and one on the other side if it doesn't work one side try the other side but one has to go in the center and that's to test them make sure your coil packs are working properly and then yeah you put your new new spark plug in so you get your spark plug okay and that goes into a special spark plug socket and that's actually a 16 mil millimeter socket oh, stuck together it's in there like that okay see and then it will sit in there so it won't fall out see and then you just be careful blow you can blow these out with um, if they're dirty inside there get the air compressor actually just turn the engine over a couple of couple of cranks with nothing in it and just spits out a little bit just to make any debris pop out and then you just feel it back back a little bit back off then try to tighten it up and it will grab on now if it keeps if it tries to grab straight away and won't go any further with just your hand, you've got it cross-threaded. So just back it off and go again. And you've got to be really critical with these. You've got to make sure because you can snap them off in the head. And then, yeah, you're taking the head off. It's a giant job. So be very careful with these. Never do them up with a long rattle gun or anything like that. Just by hand until you can be confident that that's going in there. Like so. And then you're going to get your socket, your ratchet handle, socket set ratchet handle, and tighten it up. Oh, I think I'm loosening it. <laughs> Clockwise, guys, for tightening. Righty tidy, lefty loosey, as they say. And you can see that's touched now. Now I'm going to do it about a half turn like that, 90 degree, and then a little bit more. And you don't want to go right at the end of your handle. You kind of leave your hand here because you don't want to. As hard as you can do here, reasonably, you can feel it kind of stop with that much there with no real leverage. That's enough already. It's all they need to be. And then that be down in there. There you go, see? And then all you do is your first one, so that's a front one. So it's in line, the nut, okay, the bolt goes in line with the plug there, as you can see, and you make sure that's clean. I've already sprayed them off with contact cleaner that I've got there, okay, and you can have a look down them, make sure they're not corroded inside. They all look nice, so they look nice and clean, so they don't have to do anything else with them. And put that on there, the seat on there, and then your bolt, and plug it back in. Obviously, I'll bolt that up afterwards. Plug that back in and you just repeat the process for all of them. And the other, same with this end. You can not attach this bit, put that on, or you can use a slightly shorter um, thing. I think this is a six inch 
extension. But I, I managed to get that in with that going through there. Um, some of them you can get ones that bendy, like they're on like a spring. So there you go, guys. And then you put your vanity cover or your beauty cover back on again. And you, away you go. You start her up. But I just got to clean all this out. Okay, guys. Um, and really, you should. I should have disconnected the negative terminal. Uh, just, just in case you arch something out with these. It's really you should actually. Um, but I haven't. All right, guys. I just thought I'd make a little video on uh, the dual spark system for 2002 Honda Jazz 1.3. 3D engine. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And I can also um, do these headlights again, restore them as well. Um, but that can be another video I'll show about that. On I've done them on my MR2, and I can do them on the on the Jazz here. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, check out the rest of my channel. Okay, um, I've got 70 odd videos on on YouTube. So check out other ones there. I've got lots of different things on there. Um, as always, stay beautiful, stay true to yourself, and peace out from Siamese Fighter.